So let us pray and commit this class to God's hand. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are thank you. We thank you for yet another uh, moment uh, given to us. And Father, we are thank we are thankful for keeping us today and for giving us strength and uh, protecting us, supplying our needs, or even encouraging our souls. And uh, we present ourselves before your presence, Lord, and we ask you for your guidance. If we had not been saved uh, by the blood of Christ, uh, we would not be here. Yes. Definitely, we would be doing something else. I don't know what, Lord, but definitely it wouldn't be the things of God. So we appreciate how you dealt with our minds when you did. And Father, how you dealt with our souls. So as we start this class, help us to get from it that which will be uh, needed and that which will be helpful. Uh, that we might glorify your name and uh, we will be able to be a holy influence uh, on those who are around us. We thank you for those who have already connected. And Father, we cannot uh, just pass the moment to ask you for the saints in Cuba, uh, for the uprising, for the, the killing that is going on, for uh, so many uh, people in fear and turmoil. Uh, Lord, the 62 years who we ask you, extend your hand. You you take away kings and you put and you place kings according to your word. So we we remember the church in Cuba, as we remember the church in so many places where they are being persecuted, like in North Korea and China and many yes. places in Africa, Nicaragua and Venezuela, Lord. There are so many other places. You know what is happening. And uh, your church needs you. Uh, in Christ's name, give us your guidance. Give us understanding. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right. Um, we dealt with uh, why people don't get from God what they need. And uh, we dealt with a situation uh, that is found in Luke 5 about the healing of the man of the palsy. And we saw several things there. Um, I told you that um, what holds back God from blessing us in many instances is ourselves. Uh, it's not circumstances and it's not the devil really. Uh, there are too many reserves, too many wrong attitudes, too many unbelief, too much wrath, uh, too much unconcern, and too much reasoning in the part of uh, people that profess that they believe in God and uh, they even profess uh, to be Christians. Uh, we dealt with the thought of God's attitude towards man. And uh, we read in, in the chapter 5, Luke 5, 17, where he says that, um, let me see, I'm, I was in the wrong book. Okay. Luke 5, and 17, he says, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, we already de dealt with that, which were come out of every town of, of Galilee. We also dealt with that. We uh, gave you a little bit of geography concerning Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And this is the scripture that, uh, or the phrase that I may emphasize in. Uh, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now we know that only one man was healed. Only one. But the word of God says that the power of God was present to heal them all. Or to heal them. So why uh, all these other people 
were not healed or blessed or helped. Nobody else did. And uh, as we go on, we will see more specifically the reasons why. Uh, bringing, bringing it to our moment, our time. Uh, we need to realize that the attitude towards man from God is to do good, okay? He, he was there and the power of God was in their midst to heal them, not to hurt them, not to condemn them, not to uh, damage them in any way. Uh, it was there to heal them. And I feel that God's attitude towards man has not changed. I believe that God wants to do us good, but our priorities are all mixed up. Uh, and I go back to the same points. Too many attitudes that are, are wrong, uh, concepts that are all mixed up in our minds, too many reserves in our part. Uh, sometimes too much unbelief. Uh, sometimes we are too upset about too many things, uh, too much unconcern. Uh, unless it's something that has to do with us, we are not very much concerned with what's happening to somebody else. Uh, too much uh, reasoning, trying to reason things. Uh, why God is this? Why uh, can you explain to me about eternity? Uh, things that really are not questions to be asking. Uh, because if you knew uh, the truth about these things, it will not help you a bit concerning your soul. So uh, the main point is that God's attitude towards men is a good attitude. But man keeps getting in God's way, even when it's against them. Now, man's attitude towards God uh, has one that is positive and there has one that is negative. Uh, in, the, in the lesson, we see that some men took the men that had the palsy uh, to Jesus. So the Bible says in Luke 5 and 20, that when Jesus saw their faith, so that's positive, that's good, right? Uh, towards the, the, the attitude towards God, uh, they have faith. Uh, this was only found in a handful of people. And uh, which shows us that big numbers necessarily are not right. And because a big, big number of people have an opinion he does not make that opinion right. And this is something that we need to uh, keep in our minds. We have to do our own thinking. God gave you a mind, okay? And that mind that God gave you, that brain that God gave you, is to be used for his glory. So you are supposed to think and not to do everything because somebody else had an opinion about something. And then you become just a follower, okay? So you need to think by yourself. Uh, uh, everyone who have been blessed in the house, but only an outsider got the blessing because all these people that were in the house and the power of God was there to heal them, none of them got anything. Yet an outsider came uh, brought by uh, this man, and, uh, and and we know, uh, getting ahead in the lesson, that he got healed. Uh, now, the negative uh, attitude of man towards God, we find him in verse 21, and the scribes and the Pharisees begin to reason, negative. We're dealing with God, you cannot reason with God. What about God? Because he's eternal. He's infinite. You are not. Uh, there are some things that uh, I would advise you when you come across questions in your life, things that are, are of an eternal nature. You please 
put those things in a drawer and be concerned about your life now. And uh, one day you will come across some answers. But we cannot expect to know every answer to everything that we don't understand to move on. We need to move on even when we don't understand some things. Because if not, you're gonna, you're gonna collapse as an individual. Okay, so don't expect uh, to understand everything about everything to actually move on in your life. Because we cannot be dragging uh, our feet, especially to you young people, uh, it is known that if by the by the year when you even before you become forty, between thirty five and forty, uh, especially males should have already settled it in what they're going to do with their life. Most young people don't know; they are guessing still what I'm going to be, what I'm going to do. They don't have a plan. They don't have a strategy. They're just living from one day to the day. There are two kinds of people. Uh, when it comes to buying groceries at the store, uh, you have those that go every day to the store and buy everything that they're going to cook that day. Most people in, in Latin America, that's what they do. They go and they buy two tomatoes, they buy uh, so much beans, so much of this, and they cook that, and then the next day they go back again. And then as the others, who buy for the whole week or for the whole month, right? So that's how people's mind works. So you need to realize that you have to have a strategy. Have a strategy. How many, I'm not criticizing this. I just want to make a point, okay? Let's say you, you are a lady, which I hope you are. Uh, and, and uh, okay, you go to bed at night, you have children to feed, and a husband, which I hope you have, and, um, and then you don't even know what you're going to cook tomorrow. So you get up in the morning, you are so confused, you don't even know where the door of the bathroom is, <laughs> and here you are looking for, oh, I, I have people to feed, I wonder. Let me open the, the freezer, okay? And then you're going to be dealing with frozen meat and all the kind of <laughs> stuff that is still going to take a long time to thaw it out and all kind of stuff. You don't even know what you're going to do. And what do I do with this? Okay, most cases, if it's ground beef, it's easy for you because you can do all kinds of things with ground beef. You can invent all kinds of things. And the Mexican people say, amen. Because, uh, see, you can do all kinds of things that you want people the same way. But we need a strategy in our lives. We cannot live from day to day. Because, listen, next year, we're going to be in the same spot again. If you have not, if you don't have a plan for your life, is that important? It is so important. Listen to this one, okay? And don't fall from your seat. Everything God ever did, he did it with a strategy. Yes. God never sent the armies of Israel into a battle without giving them, giving them a battle plan. Yes. You will do this and this and this and this. He did the same thing with David. So here we are. Facing the uncertain times that we're living, and we cannot figure out. There are some people who are already in the fourth year of college and they still can't figure out what they want to be. I wonder, do I want to be a brain doc, a brain surgeon, or uh, anesthesiologist, or what? Well, I, don't, I don't know. They don't know. Okay, so. Now, if that's the way that you want to handle your life, of course, you can go to heaven like that. But we are dealing with the thought that we cannot do that with our soul and with our lives. We need to have 
uh, a goal. People that are not sanctified and they, they don't prepare themselves, they don't do any seeking, they don't try to even find out what's wrong with them. And uh, they don't do any investigation, they are tired, There's, they are so confused, they, they don't even know where they stand. So uh, it is your soul and that's what we have this class. I mean, we don't have to have this classes. So what do we have this class? Just to be reminded of how important spiritual things are because yes. you are a spiritual being. You are not all ears and stomach. You are an individual. You are a soul. Okay? You are a spiritual being. That's, that's how the package comes. A spirit, mind, and body, or soul, body, and mind. You can use it one way or the other. It doesn't affect the meaning and because you are a spiritual being you have to take care of that inner being because the inner being is going to actually help the flesh being that you are okay so we are spiritual beings and we are looking through these windows here um we need to have a strategy. We need to know what we're going for. So dealing with reasoning, put it aside, put it in a drawer, wait, wait to mature. You'll be surprised what five years will do in maturing as an individual. You understand things better. At the same time, you cannot wait five years because you might die tomorrow and, 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 and crash. True. See, so uh, another thing, these people were very upset, according to Luke 4. They were full of wrath. And then in Matthew 3, we find that they were full of unbelief. And that's some of the things that we need to realize that is the attitude of men in general towards God. Now, why this? Why this condition? Well, they were deaf, spiritual deafs. Um, let us go to Luke 4 and 18. And I would like for you one, one of you please to read it. St. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. I have it. The okay. spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, isn't that wonderful? I was telling my wife today, how long has it been since we have heard the good news? It seems like everything that, that we hear is bad. wrong we don't hear many good news i mean have you hear any lately well yes when i read the word of god it's good news but there's always something wrong something evil so here's jesus making this uh awesome declaration the Lord has anointed me. I have his approval. His power is on, is on me. To do all these wonderful things. To bring freedom to the captives. To, to heal the brokenhearted. All these things. Did they hear it? No, they didn't. They missed the anointing part. What did they see? They saw the son of the carpenter Joseph. That's what they saw. They didn't see the anointing. So close. Of course, that there were people there that were brokenhearted and 
that they were sick, that were going through problems, because all humans go through problems, and he, this synagogue is full. How come any nobody got up and said, I need you? Heal me. Heal my heart. Heal, heal my life. Heal my body. They didn't hear it. And sometimes we, uh, I know that I'm responsible for this sometimes because I'm, sometimes I'm being reminded. You're not listening to me. No, it's not my wife. It's not my wife. But uh, what happens is that because I was a pastor all the time, uh, in those days, I, I was a, like a radar and people were talking to me and I was watching what was going on in the parking lot and what was what happening in the back of the church building. And I, I was hearing, but at the same time, my eyes were just just like a periscope in a submarine, just watching, watching, watching. And uh, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. Look at me, but I can hear you without looking at you. But one of the things that we need to understand is that these people miss a tremendous opportunity. And I wonder how many opportunities you have left or missed. I can tell you quite a few cases when uh, for some reason God moved, God moved in, the, in a service. And I know that that service could have been the answer to somebody that I knew needed that. The person was there. For several reasons. Not only because of sickness or uh, because of some other obvious condition issues. Uh, they were not there. They missed it. So the opportunity passed by. Like it happened to these people. Nobody got any help. It's the same situation. What's wrong with people? They don't hear. They don't listen. Wow, I, I could be restored. I could be helped. I could be... I'm stuck. I cannot not get up from this situation. I'm stuck and I cannot get out. Well, there are opportunities and moments that come to your life. And that's why you need discernment. And that's why you need the spirit of God to open your eyes so you can see. And have ears that are anointed to hear. When God speaks to you, God doesn't come and give you a push. He nudges you. So, uh, they, they did not, uh, in fact, listen what he says. He says, um, see that, will you please read verse 21? 21 of chapter four, chapter yes, five. Four. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Where? This day. In your ears. Okay. Are you hearing? In your ears. Are you hearing? It's being fulfilled. It's taking place. Where? In your ear. Well, you are not deaf. You're only deaf spiritually. And verse 22 and 23, what does it say? And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them. Is he not this show- Joseph's son? They didn't say, is not this the Messiah? Did we hear what he said? That he is an leader of God? To do all these things? How come they did act for the same reason that people don't act today? It's the same mistake that the human race makes all the time. They just don't get it. And especially today with so many things going on, so many voices that we are hearing, and sad to say most of the voices that we are hearing are wrong. 
and uh, and uh, the fact that the people are hearing all kinds of things and, and they don't know who is who's saying the truth or who's talking the truth. That's why we need more than ever before to have a knowledge of the word of God. Because th this is God's wisdom. This is God's understanding. Okay? Before all the books of science were written, Okay, the word of God already existed. Not complete, but it, it existed. So it is very important that we understand that we shake yourself. Have you seen what a dog does? A dog, when he gets wet? Can any of you do me an uh, example how? They lick themselves. Yeah, they shake themselves. Yeah. They shake themselves off. Yeah, and, and, and you know, they, and they don't do, they, they, they begin at the head and they end up at the tail. It's like this, you know, they really finish. <laughs> and, and what I see here is a picture of what some people need to do today. They need to shake themselves just like a dog do from all the polluted water that you have gathered in your skin, sure. means in your life, yes. in your mind, spider webs, all kinds of stuff. You have been under the influence of so much, uh, so much, so many people, which is the wrong kind of people, as sad to say, teachers and uh, pals and people that, uh, like I told you many times, I don't like to use the word, uh, you know, hang around. Uh, there's only two types of animals that hang around, and it's uh, the uh, bats and possums. And uh, I don't think that you're either one. So I'm hanging around. Well, why are you hanging around? There's so much to do. Why are you hanging? Uh, see, these are <laughs> words and phrases that people use. And it's part, actually, of the style of life that they live to a certain degree. It's not that I want to be picky, but it is so, there are so many phrases today that we have picked up that is actually uh, a reflection of how their minds work, what they say. Okay. Uh, there's a man, I just was checking my laptop today, and uh, there's an actor, an actor from Hollywood. I don't know if he's Puerto Rican or Mexican, I know he has an accent. Uh, he has never been that I know, a leading man, maybe he has. Uh, he's short, he has a little mustache, and uh, he has a, an accent. And he was giving his own opinion with a lot of foul language. Uh, every two, three words, he wrote that same word into it all the time. And he went on and on. He was uh, criticizing the fathers and the parents for being afraid that in the, in the schools, they are teaching this uh, sex uh, I don't know, there's so many ways of explaining it. Um, whatever they are calling it. I don't know, it seems like every two, three months they change. Uh, but anyway, he was talking and talking and talking. and said, they're not teaching this to your children. Don't be afraid. Uh, are you stupid? And then another word, that word. Okay, so somebody who is a knowledgeable man and knows what he's talking about, answer him. He said, this person doesn't have a right just because he's an actor. He doesn't know anything about school. He doesn't know anything that they are teaching. He doesn't have a right. He doesn't have an opinion that is worth listening to because he does not have understanding about the material. So you find all this people that because 
either they are rappers or they are a sports fan, um, sport people, or people from Hollywood or whatever they are, okay? Given their opinion about political things, you don't know nothing about political things. You don't even know the history of United States right. So here we have people telling us what is right. And your opinion is definitely, because if you have Christian background and if you are a safe individual, you have, your opinion is more valuable than anybody who is given their opinion over their head because they have a degree or because they are uh, hitting 400 in baseball or uh, whatever it may be, okay? So we need to be careful that our, our heroes are not people that should not be called heroes, okay? Sure. Heroes are people that are saving lives like some doctors or, or some other people in different fields, they are making a difference. Not people that are dealing with a ball and giving us all kinds of opinions and what they think. I'm talking about politics. You never took a course in politics. So anyway, um, it was fulfilled their years, but they did not listen. They, they uh, had a deafness. They had forgetfulness, which is actually one of the main points here. They forgot their own history as a nation. And we are living today times, sad to say, that we are forgetting the history of this nation. I have been doing some study and research about uh, what happened with Abraham Lincoln and the uh, Emancipation Proclamation and different things. And it is so sad how people want to twist things, twist them around, because that's what they did in Cuba. They twisted history in such a way that the people forgot where they came from. But anyway, they forgot their own history. And as we go back to look for, please, um, verse 24, and he said, this is Jesus talking, Okay. Very, I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. That's why it's hard for a family member to speak to other family members. They are ready to hear somebody else except you. But I tell you a truth. Now, this is just, I'm going to tell you something that is true. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Eliah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. It seems that these people have forgotten what had happened to Prophet Elijah. Okay, their history was all mixed up. So Jesus had to remind them. Why? Why did Jesus brought this story out? Because when, when he was talking to them in chapter 4 about the acceptable, uh, the acceptable year of the Lord and I have been anointed to do this and to do that. They did not pay attention to him. And he said, well, uh, I, I can understand because you have forgotten so much. You have forgotten so much. And uh, according to the things that, uh, and I can tell, it's a sad, really, a sad uh, 
uh, how would I say, a sad picture. That most Christian young people today know more about Hollywood movies that they know about the Bible and its history and geography. Sad. Very sad. So uh, some people have to make an effort and try to make up time. Elijah, verse 25. So what happened with Elijah? There was famine in the land. And Jesus said, I'm going to tell you the truth. Elijah was hungry and he was thirsty. Yet God did not send him to any household of Israel but send him to a house of Sidon or Sidon, different people pronounce it a different way. A people that had been cursed, a people that actually existed because of the disobedience of the people of Israel after the death of Joshua. Those people should not exist. So why these people are existing? Because that's ha that happens when you don't take, when you have the time, the, uh, how would I call this? You know, we have good grass and then we have, uh, uh, what do we call the, the other type of grass? Come on, help me Eat. see here, people. Weeds. 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 Yeah, weeds. Yeah, weeds. Yeah. yeah. You know that weed, you don't have to feed it, right? But good grass, you have to feed it. Isn't there something? So mm -hmm. here we find this condition. He said, I cannot send Elijah to anybody in Israel because really Israel does not believe in me anymore. So he sent Elijah to a household that the woman is existing, existing because of the disobedience of Israel in times past. Isn't that something? And uh, Elijah gets there. The woman is gathering some sticks. And uh, there was not only a, uh, a famine, there was a drought. And Elijah says to the woman, bring me, bring me, can you bring me a glass of water? Well, it was no glass. Bring me some water. You know, I, I can see this old widow. Uh, if she had glasses, you know, that you kind of look him like that. And he said, what did you say? Water. You know, that's a drought, right? And he said, yeah, I know it's a drought. And he says, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, when you go prepare me a pancake. What? A pancake? He said, what I have here, she says this, what I have here is just a little bit of meal left and a little tiny bit of oil. And I'm going to make a pancake for my son and I, and then we're going to die because that's it. He said, yeah, 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 I know all that, but bring me first. The goal of Elijah. Maybe she thought that, but something happened to this woman. That's why I believe when God moves, he can surprise you when you don't expect it. Something happened to this woman that is actually given everything that she has to this unknown man that is asking for water and also for a pancake or a cake. He mentioned cake. No cake with icing, no, 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 no cake. So she goes, to the sack and she brings 
the meal and a little bit of oil that she had in the, in the, ba the battle, I mean, in the bottle, and makes a cake, bringing the water. And I can see this old woman, you know, looking up. It's just the way that I picture it, you know, just looking up like that, saying, he's eating our last meal. And uh, he ate it, he drank the water. Thank you very much. She went back and she found there was more meal left. And there was more oil in it, in the vessel. And the Bible says that they ate and drank for a long time, as long as a drought and the famine lasted. They did not. Man, you know what this was saying? You people, because you are Hebrews and you are Israelites, you think that you have that you have uh, you know all this under your control, that you are favorite, that uh, that God is going to do for you all kinds of stuff, and uh, these people that you think that they are unworthy. Well, the unworthy got rid because she was full enough to believe. But God said, and of course I'm adding that to it, you know, she was no fool, she was wise. The fear of God fell on that woman. Well, they, they got upset, you know, and they were going to take off, hey, don't go yet. We have another case here. We have the case of Elisha. Elisha. Do you remember Elisha? What happened when Naaman, the Syrian, he was a leper and he got healed, but nobody in Israel that was full of leprosy, none of the Hebrew people got healed on the Elisha's ministry. What happened here? Naaman was a general in the army of, this, of Syria. He was a hero. He was the hero of the day. But he was a leper. A little servant. A little girl servant. That had been taken captive by Naaman. Brought it to the house. To his wife. To help his wife with the chores of the house. And maybe one day as he took off his helmet. The girl saw that he had leprosy in his forehead or in his face. And he went to the, the you know, the Naaman's wife. I said, you know, I know that our, my master is, uh, is a, has leprosy, but there is a man in Israel that could heal him from his leprosy. She told her husband, her husband got gold and all kinds of uh, special silk clothing and all kinds of stuff, silver coins and caravan. Syria is not that long or, or, or that far away from Israel, really, in those days. And you see it on the map, you can see. So here he goes straight to the king, to the king of Israel. And he goes there before the king and says, uh, well, what an honor. Of course, he was the hero. He had conquered their nation. Very humble kind of. How, what can I do for you? He said, well, I need you to cure me from my leprosy. And the king said, oh, no, no, what you're trying to do here, you're trying to trick me. You're trying to trick me into another war. You're looking for an excuse to invade us again. I cannot heal anybody. And they were with this argument. And then finally the argument got to uh, Joshua. I mean, I'm sorry, to Elisha. And Elisha sent a message and said, tell him to come to me so that he will know that they are servants of God here. So here comes 
Naaman with all his chariots and his camels and, and horses and everything. And uh, they tell Elijah, you know, the Naaman is here. And he said, oh, he's there. Well, tell him to go to the river of Jordan and dip himself seven times. What happened to, what happened to Naaman? Naaman got mad and upset. He says, in Syria, we have rivers more beautiful. They have, they're famous for their names and all that said, because see, Jordan was not a big, a big river. He was, Jordan was hardly, and the only important about Jordan is that he crossed it. He crossed Israel, but it was not a big river. Uh, with a lot of importance or notoriety. So anyway, the Bible says that he got very mad and he says, let's go home. I have been insulted, this is my own words. And when he begins to make plans to go back home, one of his servants says, sir, master, if he had asked you for something worse than that, wouldn't you have done it? And you would be healed. And this man thought. You see the importance of thinking. He thought. Yeah. If he had told me. You know. To walk. Barefooted over rocks. Or. Uh, you know. Walk on my knees. For. A mile or so. I would have done it. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So here is. Naaman. Getting into the muddy, muddy waters of Jordan. Kind of ridiculous picture, you know, with his hairy legs. Getting into that muddy river. And the servants were, they have never seen Naaman's legs before. I can hear it because see, I have an imagination that. Sometimes uh, I thought that he would have maybe, you know, very thick and strong legs. Look at how skinny he is. So Naaman dips himself the first time. He comes up. He looks it's the same. He did it twice. No, three times. No, four times. He was just as leprous before. Five times, six times, he was asleep. The leper did not disappear a little bit at a time. When he dipped himself the seventh time, he came up and his skin was like the skin of a baby. The Bible says so. Oh, it's the skin of a baby. You know, our skin gets tough. And kind of ugly looking as we get old. I know that some of you are getting old, but your skin is beautiful. I cannot say the same thing about me. Okay, so he was healed. He tried to give uh, gifts, gold and all kinds of things to Elijah. Elijah did not accept anything and says, go on your way. Naaman found that Jehovah was the true God. And you know what happened? In Israel, there were many, many lepers. No one got help and healed. Who got healed? Heal, heal? An enemy of God. So do you think that because you know so many chapters in the Bible and uh, you have a right to this. This is by grace. That's right. This is by grace. Second lesson. You have to obey God fully. Yes. No five, no six times, seven times. Why don't I get any help? Because you do it halfway. Yeah. Some of you, a word that I don't like to use, but I'm using it tonight. They have some relationships that you should have cut a long time ago. Even people that go to church, even people that go to church. 
cut them off. Yeah. Because they're going to drown and they're going to drown you with them. How should I know when you are with somebody, does that person builds you spiritually or that person drains you? That's right. I don't want to be hanging around people that drain me. It's true. I want people around me that help me, that I can sharpen myself. The Bible says that iron with iron, you know what I mean? They, it, it sharpened. Of course, there's moments and time to help people. And some of us who are ministers and pastors and uh, work, you know, in this, this type of work for the Lord, we, we have to extend our hand and spend time helping others because God called us to do that. But I'm talking to a lot of people that they, they, they seem like they can make it. And they can make it and they they cry and they are empty and they're cold and they don't know why they're cold and they don't know why they cannot get nothing from the scriptures and they don't know why they can pray right and they it's just like a routine like a like a burden why because there's things that you have not got to lose in your life that's the reason why and you can be caught in a web that by the time that you are 30 years old you're going to be in the same and that father figure because this happens okay I have dealt with this for years that father figure or that mother figure that you say I will never be like that you will end up doing the same thing there's a tendency that goes with people believe me I have had people in the office in my office when I was a pastor and I say you want to be like your mom no I don't want to be like my mom you want to be like your father? No, I don't want to be like your father. Well, this is what you have to do. Did they listen? No, they did not listen. 10 or 15 years later, they were doing the same thing that they said that they didn't want to do. So this is a very serious situation, isn't it? To forget our history, to forget these lessons these people got so mad at Jesus when they heard this. Because what Jesus was telling them, you are not privileged. People will be blessed if they have faith and if they are obedient. Not because your name is this name. Not because you are the son of so-and-so. Not because you are the daughter of so-and-so. You're not going to get it because you have been in church for 20 years. Now, if you obey me and you have faith in me and you lean on me and you trust in me, then I can work with you. Those are the good news. These people have forgotten and that the reason why they were mad was because they were put in that light. That God did not help no lepers and he didn't help no widows in Israel at the time of Elijah and Elisha ministers, ministry, because of their condition. So, I think that we still have more for another class. There's enough material here. You think you were over? We were over? There's enough class here for another more. Before we finish with this. To me. This is rich. Because you can read it. And you can skate over it. Without realizing. What had happened. And then you will see later. Some things that. I have not mentioned. But I believe they are worth mentioning. So. So. You have any questions? No questions. Thank you. That's very encouraging. Yes, amen. I trust that uh, whatever was discussed. Um, 
I don't want this to be a monologue, you know, just preach at you. I'm, I don't even want to preach at you. I just want to talk to you. But some of these, uh, some of these uh, truths are so powerful. And it hurts me that we just pass them over. We don't pay attention to it. And we need to know the word of God. We want to be successful. Yes. And, and, and God will lead us in the right way so we don't have to live with failure. And then get to a certain time in your life, you said, and so what? Why did I work so hard? Why I study so much? Now what? So I always pray for you. And I trust that you get something from this lesson uh, tonight. Yes. And uh, the Lord willing, we'll see you uh, next Wednesday. I'm willing, okay? So uh, we're going to dismiss in, in prayer. So let me see. Uh, Joseph, you wanna dismiss us in prayer? Sure. Dear gracious Father, thank you God for the opportunity that we had just now God to listen to the lesson that, that you gave your servant God. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to hear truth, for allowing us to be able to partake of your word, God. Many, many were persecuted in this world, Father, just for obeying you, just for, for loving Amen. you and praising you, yes. God, for who we are, God. We're privileged, we're blessed, Father, and I ask that this lesson that you've given us, Father, that we may each apply it to our hearts and keep it, Please. Father, throughout the week, throughout, throughout the month, throughout our lives, Father, God. Each lesson is important, God, just how the pastor said the other day. And that we are responsible for the for for the messages that we don't hear. We're responsible for the lessons that that we don't listen to, Father God. And I I want to be responsible for for this lesson, God. I wanted to to apply it to yes, my heart, and to heart, God. I'm so grateful for you, Father God. I ask that you may continue to bless us, Father, and and take care of us, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask this. Amen. Amen. Amen.